So, E3D are making a slicer. Raise your hands if you saw this one coming. No, you didn't. They kept this one under pretty tight wraps and... Well, it might have been a good decision that way. Anyways, their slicer is called Patheo. Just this morning, they've announced that the secret Skunkworks team at E3D has been hacking away at a slicer for the last two plus years. And today, everyone gets to try it out. You can get the beta build right now, and we're gonna look into whether that's actually a beta. But let's just jump right in and uh, check it out, see what it does. So again, anyone can try out the beta right now. It's available for Windows, Linux, Mac OS, so basically for everyone. You install it, and the first thing you see is a login screen. Well, the thing is, Patheo is not an open source slicer. It's not necessarily even gonna be a free slicer. It is a commercial product that is developed by E3D and is set for a, you know, more of a power user audience. At some point, Patheo is going to be a product that will cost someone money, but E3D haven't quite figured out whether that's gonna be like private users, uh, enthusiasts, power users, where, where they draw that line, where they charge people money, whether there can even be a free version of it, but for now, it's free for everyone. You can use all the features you want as long as you want with the current beta build. So next up, you're getting pretty much exactly what you would expect. You pick your printer. I'm using the Ultimaker 3 here. You pick a filament with it, PLA for me. And yeah, from then on out, you can just drag in your model, hit slice, wait for a very long time, and then you get your G-code that you can export and print. And, you know, depending on what you print, what your geometry looks like, it either looks really, really good, um, you know, some things still need a bit of tuning, obviously. Um, some prints come out really crisp, others kind of don't work, but this wasn't the slicer's fault. But overall, it slices. It does what it says on the tin. But my question about this is, and I've asked E3D about this, is, you know, what is the killer feature? Why would you want to use Patheo right now over SlickTR, Cura, all of the other free alternatives that are open source on top of that? And there's like three key points that make Patheo different from other slicers. First of all, it is completely rewritten from scratch. So the goal with development up to today was to build a really robust code base that you know they could then develop features for. Because if you actually look at what the uh, what the Patheo slicer does right now as far as configuration options and, and like advanced stuff like even infill patterns, it only has a single infill pattern. It doesn't do gap fill. It doesn't do retracts, adjustable retracts. It doesn't do acceleration or jerk settings. It doesn't do most of the things you would be looking for in an advanced slicer. But the goal for them right now is to build a robust base first and then be able to very easily add all those features on top. So that's number one. And number two is the way that they're handling the shell around your model. So with any 3D print, you have a solid shell and then a sparse infill section. And the way that they're generating the solid shell sounds pretty good. So what they're basically doing is they're ensuring that the absolute thickness of your shell is gonna be the same no matter whether it's gonna be a slanted wall, a straight uh, vertical wall, a horizontal one, it's just always going to be that constant thickness. And there's one pretty interesting thing that's resulting from this, and that's the way that they're handling uh, when you get a solid surface or an external surface built on top of sparse infill is what they're calling shelving. And according to E3D, that's supposed to give your solid layers more of an area to grab onto because it's actually printing perimeters instead of just going that squiggly solid infill that, for example, Cura does or SlickThrow does. But the interesting thing is the area it's grabbing onto that infill is smaller than, for example, SlickTR. And SlickTR actually widens that contact patch where first layer of solid material lays down onto infill to grab onto sparse infill. I've not seen an issue with either approach yet. E3D are saying their approach works just as well while using less material. But in the days that I've had to try out Pathio, I've not really had the chance to test those individual features in depth because they're still quite a few other things that they should fix first. And the third feature that stands out with this is that they have hierarchical settings for pretty much anything you print. So you can have your global print settings, the same thing you do for example in Cura, where you have one set of print settings for any object you print on the same plate. And on top of that, you can group models into, well, groups, uh, and set settings for that group. And then on the model basis even, you can set your own set of settings for this. So Simplify 3D is calling that processes and of course that's exactly what this is going for. SlickTR for example can do like setting overrides for individual models. The way that Patheo implements it I think is, is nice. It's still in need of a lot of fine tuning for usability and for making it actually 
intuitive because you never know whether the setting you're changing in global settings is being overwritten in the model or in the group settings. The software doesn't make that very clear whether the setting you're changing right now actually has any effect on the road. But yeah, per model and per group settings, I think are, are really nice if you do like full plates of prints and, and you, you have like an entire print you want to reproduce. We have really fine tuned settings for every single part you print. I'm not using that a lot because I usually only have a, a single print on my plate because I don't trust printers to not fail and, and kind of create a mess for an individual object and have to scrap the entire plate. But if you trust your printers more than I do, then that for sure is something that could come in really useful. I can also see it coming in really handy for tuning in your print settings or for testing filaments, uh, for example, for the Philween test series. One other feature that I can't really put my finger on yet is the scripting engine that you get. Of course, in any slicer you get like start ng codes, layer change g codes, but in Pathio you can do some pretty complex math based on what the slicer and the print is currently doing. And you can use those calculations to insert arbitrary G code pretty much anywhere into your print. I don't immediately see a ton of applications for this where you would actually need to script something instead of changing a setting in the slicer that does the same thing, but it might just be because no other slicer does this yet that we've not figured out yet what we can use this for. And of course this is a really powerful feature that just needs the right people to put it to use. So yeah, that's the features of E3D Pathio. Uh, it doesn't do a whole lot honestly and to be totally honest, I was severely disappointed when I tried this out because, it, you know, E3D making a slicer, it's like, okay, big experienced company making a, a product that is so essential for all us, you know, FDM 3D printer users. This should be good. Well, it's right now, it's... Uh, I don't see myself using this beta right now for, for anything except for like novelty purposes. Now they are calling this build a beta, but it's like the first version they're releasing. After two years of work, you would expect that it's a bit more fully featured than it is right now, but I don't think this should be called a beta with, you know, people's expectations with pre-release game launches that are launched as a beta, um, you know, being pretty high where it's like fully featured and fully functional basically and it might eventually crash every two or three hours. Uh, this is like, this is alpha, this is tech demo level. It doesn't do most of the things you would be using any particular slicer for. This is kind of like 2014, 2015, uh, Alessandro Ranalucci's uh, Slick 3R back then, feature-wise and output-wise. So let's actually look at a few things that it doesn't do yet and that I think are, are somewhat essential for a slicer to work well. Number one, gap fill. If you look at this thing, I hope the camera focuses, you can see that this trough back here has visible gaps between the lines. That is somewhat unacceptable. You also see that it's totally strung up because there's no retraction tuning yet. But gap fill. Gap fill is not just essential for any slicer, it's actually very essential for Pathio and the way that Pathio works because if you look at how it does its 3D offsetting, it's basically, it's taking that outer shell that it's gonna be printing solid and it actually slices it like it's a separate solid part, which means it creates an outer shell and it also creates an inner shell where it touches the infill. And anything between that, if that gap is then smaller than the nozzle size, it's just left hollow. So any sort of slanted surface, if it's not perfectly vertical, is gonna have a gap in it. It's just not gonna be touching the rest of the print. That's a part of just the novel approach of doing that true 3D offsetting. It's, I don't know if it's actually a good approach. And I mean, it sounds good on paper. It sounds very logical, but given how many little tweaks and, and little adjustments slicers have implemented these days, like I mentioned that expanded first solid layer of Slick 3R, you know, FDM 3D printing is a messy process at its core. And just because something is like the, the, the logical and the clean way to do it doesn't mean it's, it's necessarily the, the process that works the best. Uh, they are thinking about doing a different 3D offsetting approach. And it might actually be a good step looking into something that doesn't generate external perimeters on the inside of your perimeters, which, uh, yeah, doesn't make a ton of sense. One feature you might be looking into is support materials because, I mean, commercial slicer, um, Simplify 3D is the alternative and Simplify 3D is kind of touted as the one slicer that does support material really well. The thing with Pathia though is uh, support material, the first build that I tried, 
straight up crashed the slicing process. The second build I tried um, had some support interface material being somewhere completely off the build plate. Um, so I couldn't try out support material yet. They are kind of showing off a novel 3D zigzag sawtooth uh, support where the nozzle is actually moving in the Z direction so that it creates these little pins, kind of like an, an SLA printer would support its parts. It sounds promising. Not sure how well it's going to work, whether it's actually going to weld better into the model or, you know, it's going to be peelable. I don't know. But maybe support material down the road can be some feature that Patheo is good at. One other feature that is pretty absent is like any proper support for multi-material extrusion or, or dual extruder setups. Any dual color prints, not a chance. I, I don't think they've figured out the, the proper way to actually do that yet. Um, so for now, dual extrusion, well, you could use it for supports and for using different nozzles for different parts of the model. You can use a different tool for the info versus the perimeters, but it's not really there yet. And it's something that we've been, well, at least hoping would get more widely adapted over the last, well, two or three years. And yeah, one more thing that has made testing out Patheo and trying different things kind of hard is the slicing times. God, are those long. So right now with a Benchy on pretty much default settings, it takes pretty much, uh, well, half a minute or so to slice. And that is after every single settings change. There is no partial re-slicing like Slick Theory does. If you change just the info, um, it just re-slices the info and leaves everything else untouched. No, it, it, it re-slices the entire thing every single time you change something. And even though it, it does a good job of using all the cores I can throw at it, um, it's still like super slow. Comparing it to Slick Theory Prusa Edition, uh, Patheo takes about 20 times as long to slice the same model with the same settings. And that's already using up, you know, CPU resources better than slick the eyes. So really efficiency wise, it's, it's still way, way down on the list, but it's a beta build. It still has like debug stuff enabled probably. So that is something that should get optimized down the road. And yeah, that's just something that E3D really will need to do is to optimize down the road because right now the, I, there's, there's literally no reason why anybody would want to use this slicer right now. It's fun to test out. Sure, it's a, it's a novel platform. It doesn't have any standout killer feature. It does, you know, it does slice, it does the basics, but there, there's no particular reason why anyone would right now use Patheo over any other slicer literally. So I'm hoping that eventually Patheo will get some set of features or some feature that it does better than anyone else. I don't care who makes the best slicer, but as soon as you have one slicer that is better than the others, you're gonna have the others playing catch up and everyone will profit from that. Now, whether E3D will make this thing a paid product, whether it's gonna be a subscription or a free version, of course, I wish things were free, I wish things were open source. I wish they would have taken that money they invested in Patheo and instead uh, made an open source slicer better, but well, it is how it is. People are happily paying for Simplify 3D, or at least used to be. So, well, people are gonna vote with their wallets. With what Patheo looks like right now, I don't see a lot of people actually wanting to spend money on it, but well, nonetheless, I think it's, it's a bold move by E3D uh, to publish something at this stage where you get like, so few settings, it's, it, it's such an early stage for this product. It's gonna be interesting to see where this goes, where this slice is gonna fit in, because right now it's just... <laughs> Well, anyways, if any of you want to try it out for yourselves and make up your mind and try out the different features, you can do that. I've linked it below, of course. For now, it's free and E3D are making a point out of saying, okay, guys, we listen to our community. There are feedback forms all over the software. So after I think a few slices, you get asked, hey, did we do a good job? What should we change? Um, that's something that some companies don't do very well right now. But yeah, give it a spin. Let me know in the comments below what you think and I'll be seeing you all in the next one.